Evening prayer is found on page 243. Our psalm is Psalm 6, and the hymn is hymn 594 from the Lutheran service book. Jesus Christ is the light of the world. The light no darkness can overcome. Stay with us, Lord, for it is evening, and the day is almost over. Let your light scatter the darkness and illumine your church. Joyous light of glory of the immortal Father, Heavenly, holy, blessed Jesus Christ, we have come to the setting of the sun, and we look to the evening light. We sing to God, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, you are worthy of being praised with pure voices forever. O Son of God, O giver of life, the universe proclaims your glory. Blessed are you, O Lord our God, King of the universe, who led your people Israel by a pillar of cloud by day and a pillar of fire by night, enlighten our darkness by the light of your Christ. May his word be a lamp to our feet and a light to our path, for you are merciful and you love your whole creation. And we, your creatures, glorify you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Let my prayer rise before you as incense, the lifting up of my hands as the evening sacrifice. O Lord, I call to you, come to me quickly. Hear my voice when I cry to you. Let my prayer rise before you as incense, the lifting up of my hands as the evening sacrifice. Set a watch before my mouth, O Lord, and guard the door of my lips. Let not my heart incline to any evil thing. Let me not be occupied in wickedness with evil doers. But my eyes are turned to you, O God. In you I take refuge. Strip me not of my life. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and will be forever. Amen. Let my prayer rise before you as incense, the lifting up of my hands as the evening sacrifice. Let us pray.
Let the incense of our repentant prayer ascend before you, O Lord, and let your loving kindness descend on us, that with purified minds we may sing your praises with the church on earth and the whole heavenly host, and may glorify you forever. Amen. O Lord, rebuke me not in your anger, nor discipline me in your wrath. Be gracious to me, O Lord, for I am languishing. Heal me, O Lord, for my bones are troubled. My soul also is greatly troubled, but you, O Lord, how long? Turn, O Lord, deliver my life. Save me for the sake of your steadfast love, for in death there is no remembrance of you. In Sheol, who will give you praise? I am weary with my moaning. Every night I flood my bed with tears. I drench my couch with my weeping. My eye wastes away because of grief. It grows weak because of all my foes. Depart from me, all you workers of evil, for the Lord has heard the sound of my weeping. The Lord has heard my plea, the Lord accepts my prayer. All my enemies shall be ashamed and greatly troubled. They shall turn back and be put to shame in a moment. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and will be forever. Amen. God's own child, I gladly say it, I am baptized into Christ. He because I could not pay it, gave my full redemption price. Do I need us treasures many? I have one worth more than any that brought me salvation free, lasting to eternity. Sin disturb my soul no longer. I am baptized into Christ. I have come forward even stronger, Jesus' cleansing sacrifice. Should a guilty conscience seize me, since my baptism did release me in a dear forgiving flood, sprinkling me, with Jesus' blood. Satan, hear this proclamation, I am baptized into Christ. Drop your ugly accusation, 
I am not so soon enticed now that to the font I've traveled all your might has come unraveled and against your tyranny God my Lord unites with me death you cannot end my gladness i am baptized into christ when i die i leave all sadness to inherit paradise though i lie in dust and ashes face assurance brightly flashes baptism has the strength divine to make life immortal mine there is nothing worth comparing to this lifelong comfort sure open night my grave is staring even there i'll sleep secure though my flesh awaits its raising still my soul continues praising i am baptized in to christ i'm a child of paradise The reading is taken from the Gospel according to St. John, the 20th chapter, verses 19 to 20, just a couple verses here. On the evening of that day, the first day of the week, the doors being locked where the disciples were for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood among them and said to them, Peace be with you. When he had said this, he showed them his hands and his side. Then the disciples were glad when they saw the Lord. O Lord, have mercy upon us. Thanks be to God. In many and various ways, God spoke to his people of old by the prophets. But now in these last days, he has spoken to us by his Son. Sermon from Dr. Luther. Consider again the brief words uttered by Christ. Peace be with you. The 19th verse of our lesson, John 20. And behold my hands and my side. Again repeated in verse 27. And as the Father has sent me, even so I send you. That'll be fun for the recording, won't it? Now, it is clear and manifest that every person likes to think that he will be saved and attain to eternal salvation. This is what I suppose to discuss now. You also know that all philosophers, doctors, and writers have studiously endeavored to teach and write what attitude man should take to piety. They have gone to treat and great trouble, I might add. This subject in this way, which is, as is evident, to little avail. Now, genuine and true piety consists of two kinds of works, those done for others, which are the right kind, and those done for ourselves, which are, again, unimportant. In order to find a foundation, one man builds churches, 
Another goes on a pilgrimage to St. James or St. Peter's. A third fasts or prays. Where a cow goes barefoot or does something else of the kind. Such works are nothing whatever and must be completely destroyed. Mark these words. None of our works have any power whatsoever. For God has chosen a man, the Lord Christ Jesus, to crush death, destroy sin, shatter hell, since there was no one before he came who did not inevitably belong to the devil. The devil, therefore, thought he would get a hold upon the Lord when he hung between two thieves and was suffering the most contemptible and disgraceful of deaths, which was cursed both by God and by men. But the Godhead was so strong that death, sin, and even hell were destroyed. Someone go ahead and move the camera toward me, please. If not, bring it over here. Thank you. Very gracious, thank you. Therefore, you should note well the words which Paul writes to the Romans in his fifth chapter, verses 12 to 21. Our sins have their source in Adam, and because Adam ate the apple, we have inherited sin from him. But Christ has shattered death for our sake in order that we might be saved by his works, which are alien to us and not by our works. But the papal dominion treats us altogether differently. It makes rules about fasting, praying, and butter eating, so that whoever keeps the commandments of the Pope will be saved, and whoever does not keep them belongs to the devil. It thus seduces the people with the delusion that goodness and salvation lies in their own works. But I say that none of the saints, no matter how holy they were, attained salvation by their works. Even the Holy Mother of God did not become good, was not saved by her virginity or her motherhood, but rather by the will of faith and the works of God and not by her purity or her own works. Therefore, mark me well, this is the reason why salvation does not lie in our own works. No matter what they are, it cannot and will not be effected without faith. Now, someone may say, look, my friend, you're saying a lot about faith and claiming that our salvation depends solely upon it. Now I ask you, how does one come to faith? I will tell you, our Lord Christ said, peace be with you, behold my hands, etc. In other words, he's saying, look, man, I am the only one who has taken away your sins and redeemed you, etc. Now be at peace. Just as you inherited sin from Adam, not that you committed it, for I did not eat the apple any more than you did. And yet this is how we came to be in sin. So we have not suffered as Christ did, and therefore we were, we were made free from death and sin by God's work, not by our works. Therefore God says, Behold, man, I am your redemption. Isaiah 43, even 3, prophesies about this. Just as Paul said to the Corinthians, Christ is our justification redemption, etc., 1 Corinthians 1.30. Christ is our justification and redemption, as Paul says in this passage. And here our Roman masters say, yes, redemptor, redeemer, this is true, but it is not enough. Therefore I say again, alien works, these make us good. Our Lord Christ says, I am your justification. I have destroyed the sins you have upon you. Therefore, only believe in me. Believe that I am he who has done this. Then you will be justified. For it is written, justicia est, fides. Righteousness is identical with faith and comes through faith. Therefore, if we want to have faith, we should believe the gospel, Paul, etc., and everyone who echoes it, and not the papal brethies or the decretals 
but rather guard ourselves against them as against fire. For everything that comes now from the Pope cries out, give, give, and if you refuse, you are of the devil. It would be a small matter if they were only exploiting the people, but unfortunately, it is the greatest evil in the world to lead the people to believe that outward works can save or make a man good. At this time, the world is so full of wickedness that it is overflowing and is therefore now under a terrible judgment and punishment which God has inflicted, so that the people are perverting and deceiving themselves in their own minds. For to build churches and to fast and pray and so on has the appearance of good works, but in our heads we are deluding ourselves. We should not give way to greed, desire for temporal honor and other vices, and rather be helpful to our poor neighbor. Then God will arise in us and we in him. And this means a new birth. What does it matter if we commit a fresh sin, if we do not immediately despair, but rather say within ourselves, O oh God, thou livest still, Christ my Lord is the destroyer of sin. Then at once the sin is gone. And also the wise man says, Septies in die cadit justus et resurgit. A righteous man falls seven times and rises again from Proverbs 24, 16. The reason why the world is so utterly perverted and in error is that for a long time there have been no genuine preachers. There are perhaps 3,000 priests among whom one cannot find four good ones. God have mercy on us in this crying shame. And when you do get a good preacher, he runs through the gospel superficially and then follows it up with a fable about the old ass or a story about Dietrich of Berna, or he mixes in something of the pagan teachers, Aristotle, Plato, Socrates, and others, who are all quite contrary to the gospel and also contrary to God, for they did not have the knowledge of the light which we possess. I, if you come to me and say, the philosopher says, do many good works, then you will acquire the habit, and finally you will become godly, then I say to you, do not perform good works in order to become godly. But if you are already godly, then do good works, though without affection, sorry, affectation, and with faith. There you see how contrary these two points of view are. In former times, the devil made great attacks upon the people, and from these attacks, from these attacks, they took refuge in faith and clung to the head, which is Christ, and so he was unable to accomplish anything. So now he has invented another device, that is the devil. He whispers into the ears of our junkers that they should make exactions from people and give them laws. This way it looks well on the outside, but inside it's full of poison. So the young children grow up in a delusion they go to church even, thinking that salvation consists in praying, fasting, and attending Mass. Thus it is the preacher's fault. But still, there would be no need if only we had right preachers. The Lord said three times to St. Peter, Petre amas me, etc. Pasque oves meas. Peter, feed, feed, feed my sheep. What is the meaning of paschera? It means to feed. How should one feed the sheep? Only by preaching the word of God, only by preaching faith. Then our junkers come along and say, paschera means leges dare, to enact laws, but with deception. Yes, they are well fed. They feed the sheep as the butchers do on Easter Eve. Whereas one should speak the word of God plainly to guide the poor and weak in faith. They mix in their beloved Aristotle who is contrary to God. Despite the fact that Paul says in Colossians 2.8, beware of laws and philosophy. What does philosophy mean? If we knew Greek, Latin and German, we would see clearly what the apostle is saying. Is not this the truth? I know very well that you don't like to hear this and that I am annoying many of you. Nevertheless... I shall say it, I will also advise you, no matter who you are, if you have preaching in mind or are able to help it along, then do not become a priest or a monk. 
for there is a passage in the 33rd and 34th chapters of the prophet Ezekiel, unfortunately a terrifying passage, which reads, If you forsake your neighbor, see him go astray, and do not help him, do not preach to him, I will call you to account for his soul. Chapter 33, 8 and 34, 10. This is a passage which is not often read, but I say you become a priest or a monk in order to pray your seven canonical hours and say mass and you think you want to be godly. Alas, you're a fine fellow. It, i.e. being a priest or monk, will fail you. You say the Psalter, you pray the Rosary, you pray all kinds of other prayers and say a lot of words. You say Mass, you kneel before the altar, you read confession, you go on mumbling and maundering, and all the while you think you are free from sin. And yet in your heart you have such great envy that if you could choke your neighbor and get away with it, credibility... Creditably, you would do it. And that's the way you say mass. It would be no wonder if a thunderbolt struck you to the ground. But if you've eaten three grains of sugar or some other seasoning, no one could drag you to the altar with red-hot tongues. You have scruples, and that means to go to heaven with the devil. I know very well that you don't like to hear this. Nevertheless, I will tell the truth. I must tell the truth, even though it costs me my neck, 20 times over that the verdict may not be pronounced against me, i.e. at the last judgment. Yes, you say there were learned people a hundred or fifty years ago too. That is true, but I'm not concerned with the length of time or the number of persons, for even though they knew something of it then, the devil has always been a mixer who preferred the pagan writers to the Holy Gospel. I will tell the truth and must tell the truth. That's why I'm standing here not taking any money for it either on some special service. Just paid my regular salary, salary I should add in there. So well timed to just put an exceptional service into our program in the week in this congregation. Not getting paid anything extra for it. That's what a good preacher does. He comes in this pulpit and he preaches for the love of it to give you the word to increase and strengthen your faith for the love of it. So we continue with Dr. Luther. Therefore, we should not build upon human law or works, but rather have true faith in the one who is the destroyer of sin. Then we shall find ourselves growing in him. Then everything that was bitter before it's sweet. Then our hearts will recognize God. And when that happens, we shall be despised. We shall pay no regard to human law and then the Pope will come and excommunicate us. But then we shall be so united with God that we shall pay no heed whatsoever to any hardship, ban or law. Then someone may go on and ask, should we not keep the man-made laws at all? Can we not continue to pray fast and so on as long as the, the right way is present? My answer is that if there is present a right Christian love and faith, then everything a man does is meritorious, and each may do what he wills, so long as he has no regard for works, since they cannot save him. In conclusion, then, every single person should reflect and remember that we cannot help ourselves, but only God, and also that our works are utterly worthless. So shall we have the peace of God. And every person should so perform his work that it benefits not only himself alone, but also another, his neighbor. If he's rich, his wealth should benefit the poor. If he's poor, his service should benefit the rich. When persons are servants or maidservants, their work should benefit their master. Thus no one's work should benefit him alone. For when you note that you are serving only your own advantage, then your service is false. I am not troubled. I know very well what man-made laws are. Let the Pope issue as many laws as he likes. I will keep them all so far as I please. Therefore, dear friends, remember that God has risen up for our sakes. Therefore, let us also arise to be helpful to the weak in faith and so direct our work that God may be pleased with it. So shall we receive the peace he has given to us today. May God grant us this every day. Amen.
My soul magnifies the Lord, and my spirit rejoices in God, my Savior. My soul magnifies the Lord, and my spirit rejoices in God, my Savior. For he has regarded the lowliness of his handmaiden. For behold, from this day, all generations will call me blessed. For the Mighty One has done great things to me, and holy is his name. And his mercy is on those who fear him from generation to generation. My soul magnifies the Lord, and my spirit rejoices in God, my Savior. My soul magnifies the Lord, and my spirit rejoices in God, my Savior. He has shown strength with his arm. He has scattered the proud in the imagination of their hearts. He has cast down the mighty from their thrones and has exalted the lowly. He has filled the hungry with good things, and the rich he has sent empty away. He has helped his servant Israel in remembrance of his mercy, as he spoke to our fathers, to Abraham, and to his seed forever. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. My soul magnifies the Lord, and my spirit rejoices in God, my Savior. My soul magnifies the Lord, and my spirit rejoices in God, my Savior. In peace, let us pray to the Lord, have mercy. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord, have mercy. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the Church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord, have mercy. For this holy house, and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord, have mercy. For Matthew, Jameson, and for all our pastors in Christ, for all servants of the church, and for all the people, let us pray to the Lord, have mercy. For Joseph, Charles, and for all public servants, for the government and those who protect us, that they may be upheld and strengthened in every good deed, let us pray to the Lord, have mercy. For those who work to bring peace, justice, health, and protection in this and every place. Let us pray to the Lord, have mercy. For those who bring offerings, those who do good works in this congregation, those who toil, those who sing, and all the people here present who await from the Lord great and abundant mercy, let us pray to the Lord, 
have mercy. For favorable weather, for an abundance of the fruits of the earth, and for peaceful times, let us pray to the Lord. Have mercy. For our deliverance from all affliction, wrath, danger, and need, let us pray to the Lord. Have mercy. For the faithful who have gone before us and are with Christ, let us give thanks to the Lord. Alleluia. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. Rejoicing in the fellowship of all the saints, let us commend ourselves, one another, and our whole life to Christ our Lord. To you, Lord. O God, from whom come all holy desires, all good counsels, and all just works, give to us, your servants, that peace which the world cannot give, that our hearts may be set to obey your commandments, and also that we, being defended from the fear of our enemies, may live in peace and quietness. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Taught by our Lord and trusting his promises, we are bold to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Almighty and merciful Lord, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, bless and preserve you. Amen.